Hey guys, so in today's video I want to talk about this component here which is the RGB LED. Now RGB stands for red, green, blue and that's because it's essentially um, three LEDs in one each of which uh, shine one of those three lights. So we've got a red, a green and a blue LED all uh, in this housing at the top here. That's why we've got four legs. Three of them are going to be connected directly to the red, the green or the blue um, LEDs inside and the longest leg is either a common anode, meaning it's a leg going to the positive terminal of our power source uh, which all three of these LEDs share or it's a leg that goes to the negative terminal, it's a common cathode which again all three LEDs share. Now I've tested this LED already um, just by connecting the longest leg and um, just one of the other legs. Uh, I chose the, the red one, I'll, I'll indicate which one's red in a second. Just connected it, uh, took a stab and connected it one way. Uh, the LED didn't light up because of course it's a, a diode so it's only going to work if the current is flowing through that LED in the right direction. So then I just flipped it and discovered that it would only light up if the longest leg was connected um, towards positive, meaning this is a common anode. I've sort of sketched the um, LED quite badly here. So we've got the housing up here with our three LEDs inside. Uh, we've got, if our longest leg is the second one in from the left, um, then that means our leftmost leg is going to be connect is going to be connected to the red LED. Um, and then the one next to the longest, the common anode, is going to be um, connected to green. And then the final shortest leg uh, should be connected to blue. Okay. Um, now, I'm not going to do anything um, program programmatically, can I say that? I'm not going to be programming anything with our Arduino today. I want to show a circuit that I intend on using with students to talk about the physics of wavelengths and colours in true maker learners fashion. Um, so I'm going to be connecting this LED, um, this RGB LED, to a circuit that I've pre-made whereby the, the connection to ground for all three legs is also connected in series to three potentiometers. Now, I'll share the um, schematic for this, which I think I should be able to build on a Tinkercad um, circuit. So I should be able to share a schematic that, that you and students can use. And then what I, should, what I hope to see is that by dialing different values into these potentiometers, by changing their resistance, I'm going to be able to um, control the dominant colour that we see on this RGB LED. So let's plug this in and actually hopefully see that it works. I'm going to dial all of these back. Um, now I should say one other thing that I've made sure to happen is for the um, potentiometers to have a fixed resistor next to them as well, just so that when the resistance is um, pretty much minimal on these potentiometers, I don't end up blowing one of the LEDs in this housing. I've already done that to one of these, just, just playing around. Um, I managed to blow the red LED, uh, meaning now I can only exhibit uh, mixtures of, of green and blue light. So, okay, without any further delay, let's plug this in. So if I move it a bit closer to myself so I can see. Um, so this is my common, this white cable is the row that I need for my common anode. So if I just plug that in there and try to shift, so let's just give these a bit of space. Okay, that should be enough space for each of these to shift into um, the relevant pins. And Okay, so we can see that song. So again, I'll be sharing this circuit diagram. I don't want most of the video to be talking about the wiring for this. Um, you're free to use the resources I've linked in this video. 
Um, but what I should denote is um, what each of these potentiometers is connected to. So I've got potentiometers one, two, and three. And these are essentially controlling the, um, the resistance within my... Why did I put G? <laughs> Why did I write G for red? Um, I'll tell you what, let's... I'm not going to write letters, I'm just going to do a colour patch. Can you tell it's quite late here? <laughs> okay, so I've got the resistance for red. Um, I've got the circuit for green with a potentiometer attached for green and I've got the um, circuit for blue. So let's just use colours so that my poor brain doesn't have to think about letters and colours. Um, Alright, and what that means is when all of these are dialed as far left as they can be, um, I, base, I, I see a whitish kind of light. Now it's worth saying at this point that I couldn't find, I've only got a limited supply of potentiometers and I couldn't find three that were exactly the same. So in fact, if I show you this, the potentiometer for my red light is actually um, quite a lot higher in resistance, which really I shouldn't, I shouldn't have because I know that um, red LEDs tend to be the most um, resilient to higher currents. I don't know the exact reason for that, I'm still still making and learning, um, but maybe I should be switching um, this out with my blue. Now, interestingly enough, what happened when I unplugged those two and I broke the red and the um, blue circuit is now I'm only seeing my green LED. In fact, let me dim my own light so that you can see this a lot better. So now we're seeing the green light. Now when I plug this back in and add a bit of red, we should see what colour? Test? Are we thinking orange? Or nothing? Okay, but that is in, so that should be okay if I dial that up a bit. Okay, we start seeing that orange. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, and then let's put the um, blue LED in just here. Okay, and then we start seeing that blue light. All right, so this is quite nice now. Um, we're seeing primarily green, so if I dial the green away by increasing my red and my, my blue, we start seeing more of a white light there, which is, which is nice. Um, and as I said, this is a really great way of showing students how red, green, and blue uh, work, both in terms of pixels and in terms of, of these LEDs. Um, so if I drastically reduce the resistance in my, um, in my red circuit, then I should exhibit mostly red, as we do, perfect. And then if I turn up my green, or I should say turn down the resistance for the green, then I start seeing a nice bright green light. And then I can do the same for my, my blue light here too. All right, absolutely perfect. Um, but we can take this a bit further, um, particularly if you're using this in, in science class. And what we can start talking about is the way that uh, humans actually perceive colour. Um, now, depending on the age group of your class, you might not want... Well, it's up to you to determine how much um, you'd like to, to go, how much depth you'd like to go into for this. I'm going to draw a graph here with a capital I here for intensity. Um, I suppose a better letter might be um, L for luminosity, and we might want to use the actual units candela. Um, but I don't want to go too far into the physics here. I just want us thinking about the way that humans perceive different colours. So on the y-axis we have intensity or luminosity, whatever you like, and I'm not going to be using actual numbers or, or values. And along the um, x-axis we're going to have um, wavelength. Okay, so we're going to go from, um, actually, I want to go sort of opposite um, with wavelengths. So I want to start with my um, longer wavelengths, ideally, um, just so that I get that RGB pattern. Um, so if I start at high wavelengths, and I start with um, red, 
on this side of the axis and then um, we know that other colours that we can have, uh, let's just put some of these on I guess, um, we know that we have to red, we've got orange, you might remember Roy G. Biv from uh, school, so let's do this, uh, Roy, then we've got G for green, um, and then we've got blue, okay, oh, what am I doing, then we've got blue, okay, and then we've got um, sort of indigo and purple, haven't we? So let's just. I haven't really got two colours for that, so let's go for just indigo and violet. Okay. Um, now, the way that the. Um, uh, ooh, rods or cones. Now, this is me not, not knowing the specific uh, biology for this. Um, let's go for cones and I'll correct it in the video later if I'm wrong. Um, what I do know is that the um, we've got three um, cones in our in our eyes that detect three different colours, and those three colours are ones that detect primarily red. So they'll sort of flash a lot when we see red, and then um, they might flash a bit for orange, might flash a bit for yellow, but that sort of dies off then. Um, and then we've also got um, cones in our eyes that detect green and also blue um, so we can pick out colours quite well we can pick out colours quite well by detecting the intensity by which these cones are sort of flashing at so if I see a red light extend this green because maybe some some of our green cones flash if um, if the red if the red cone is primarily flashing and maybe a bit of the green, then you know when our eye sort of looks at something and this happens, then our brain will say, right, that object must be red. Um, however, if we look at something that's kind of um, a bit red and maybe a little bit less but still significantly green, then our eyes will say, right, no, that thing must be orange. So we're looking at an orange object. Um, and that's certainly what happens when I dial up the red, so we're seeing quite a bit of red, but then also a bit of green, and we'll notice this orange colour coming through. Um, now if I start getting even more green, so maybe more green than I am getting red, then that's when we start seeing um, instead a yellow object, and our brain says, hey, no, that must be yellow, so if I dial up the green here, then certainly just before it, it is green, because there's so much intensity for green, um, our brains start seeing yellow, because it's seeing a bit less red and a bit more yellow. Um, now, if I get rid of red completely, so I've got just green, and I go between green and blue, well, what colour do I get there? Well, I've not drawn it in. Um, I don't really have a great representation for this colour, but between green and blue, um, that will tell our eyes that we're seeing, our eyes will say, well that must be cyan, okay, um, so if I dial up a bit of blue now we should see that sort of like almost aquamarine-y, cyan-y colour coming through, okay, and if I get rid of the uh, green completely, well, that's when we see only only the blue light. Um, now one of my favourite uh, sort of science facts about this is what happens when our eyes are sort of tricked into seeing something that they can plot and that's when we see an intense, a high intensity for red light but also a high intensity for blue light because then our eyes don't really know where to place that on this this graph of wavelengths um, because really if we're seeing a lot of red and we're seeing a lot of blue well we should in theory be seeing a lot of green as well but we're not. Um, so our brain has to actually make up a colour for that and I can create that colour now by I've got my blue dials up and my green's completely um, completely out of the picture right now. If I bring red into it we should start seeing this nice magenta colour coming and that magenta colour, this colour here, doesn't exist. Um, as a wavelength it, it, it cannot be plotted um, so there is no 
physical wavelength for this colour. Um, it is our brains detecting two colours that are so far apart from one another in wavelength without seeing anything in the middle that we have to just fill in the gap and we have to make up a colour and that colour is magenta. So with a simple circuit, um, as again, I'm, there's no code involved here at all, just with three potentiometers, three resistors, and an RGB LED, we can go quite far into the physics of colour theory. And I'm excited to do that with my students. Um, any resources that I do make for this, I'll be sure to place on the Maker Learners website, and after that, attach to this video. So please do keep checking, um, and if you've got anything that you've already done like this, please contact me, reach out, and maybe we can get it up on the Maker Learners website for others to use as well. So thanks for listening, keep making, keep learning, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.